Next section, the theorems of Pappas and Goldenus. All right, I could have butchered their names. I have no idea. I mean, Pappas, uh, Alexandrian in the 4th century A.D., somebody, you know, archived, looked back and said, you know, I think this guy was on to something. And so they credit him for this, as well as uh, somebody in uh, science and engineering typically rediscover things. And in the 1600th, uh, a uh, Swiss, Swiss mathematician, Goldenus, basically rediscovered the same thing. Okay, so it's how to calculate the area or volume of an object that is generated by revolution. That's it. It's only if you can revolve something to generate it. So if you can revolve a, a line or a curve, you'll make a surface. So maybe you just think about that. Maybe I put a, a line like this, and this is in the, the um, let's put this, the X, the Y, and the Z. And then if I revolve it around uh, this line, then it, it, that, that red line sweeps a surface. And so you can calculate that area of the surface using a very simple equation that says, how much are you going to revolve it? So the area of the surface is the angle of revolution. Most time you revolve it all two pi. But sometimes you could have revolved it only, you know, pi. Okay, but most times state is two pi. And you multiply by some distance from the axis of revolution to the centroid of that segment, that line segment. Oh, that's why it's included in this chapter. I, I have to get the centroid of that line. And then you also multiply by the length of that line. And if you take a look, this has units of, let's say, meter length. This has units meter length. I multiply. This is radian, so it's dimensionless. And I do get meter squared area. The units do work. All right, and then if you take a cross-sectional area, let's say the area under that line, and I sweep that, I revolve that, well, I just swept the volume. And the formula is very, very similar. The volume is, how much did I sweep? Typically 2 pi radian, whole 360 degrees. And then you have some distance from the line that you're revolving around. Here, it's the x-axis to what? The centroid, not of the line, but now it's the centroid of the area that's being revolved. And then the size of that area. Very simple formula, aren't they? Here they are uh, repeated on the next page. This is the equation for the area. What again was theta? What was theta? That revolution, it goes between 0 and 2 pi. Doesn't make sense to have a negative in there, 0 and 2 pi. It, uh, does it need to be in radians? Yeah, of course. R bar at perpendicular distance from the axis of revolution to the centroid of the curve. And L is the length of the generating curve. Likewise, we already mentioned those same angle of revolution some perpendicular distance, but now it's to the centroid of that area instead of the centroid of the curve, and then the generating area that's being revolved. Okay. Determine the surface area of the roof formed by rotating the parabola about the y-axis. So here's our x, here's our y-axis. This is a curve, so the wall is not part of the roof. This is not part of the roof. Only that what shaded blue is the roof. It uh, is formed by revolving. This curve, which I generated, showed as red there, about the y-axis, about this axis. So if we wanted to calculate that surface area, we need to know how, how much was did it revolve? What is the radians of revolution? Some R bar from the centroid, oh, sorry, from the axis of revolution to the centroid of the line that's generating the area, and then the length of that line. All right.
This is the hard one. So I want to calculate the length of this line. Well, that's like adding this little segment, this little segment, this little segment, this little segment, this little segment. That's how you calculate the length of, of a line. You bust it at little segments, and then we know how to calculate the length of a little segment. True? So if I can, I'll, I'll zoom in on maybe right in here. And we'll just zoom in for this a minute, and we'll think about it's a little straight line, DL. Okay. But to generate that DL, there's a little DX right here, and then a little DY right there. From somebody's theorem, uh, Pythagorean's theorem, something like that, true? And then we say, well, hmm, I have Y as a function of X. Here's the equation right there. I have a chance of getting DY DX. You probably, going back to calculus, can do that successfully. Who can generate dy dx for this equation y is a function of x? All right. You just volunteered. What is dy dx for this problem? What is it? Negative 1 eighth x. Is that what you said? Yep. That's what it is. Okay, so what you do is you say, okay, I can get this dy dx. That helps me get this dy because that dy is dy dx times dx. And I'm going to square it. All right, uh, this dx squared. So this is going to be dx squared times 1 plus dy over dx uh, Squared, put a bracket like that. Do you find, do you, did I make a mess with this math or does the math look okay to you? It looks okay? I got one thumbs up. Any other thumbs up? I'm about ready to calculate the length of that line by integration, but I need to get a little chunk, little DL, that length of that line, before I sum them up. All right, I have to scoot down, so I'm sorry about that. So, so dl is equal to dx, because I take the square root of both sides, times the square root of 1 plus the derivative dy dx squared. And for this problem, dy dx, thank you for your help back there, is going to be minus 1 eighth x. So we can put that in, and we get x squared over what 8 squared is 64 plus 1 square root dx equal to dl. That's a lot of work to get that far. But if you can get that far, now we can stand to calculate what this L is. Because that L, let me try and do it over here. L is the integral or the sum of all the little DLs, aren't they? And each little DL is a function of DX. So it's the integral of the square root 1 plus X squared divided by 64 times DX. And we're going to integrate from what is our lower limit with respect to x? Zero. What's our upper limit with respect to x? 16. That integral, because of the square root, I would have to go look it up. I need a table. And in the back of our book, there is uh, a little appendix segment. Integrals that you may not see every day. But some of you have calculators. And they can whip this out, too, numerically. Um, how many people can make this calculation with a calculator in the next two minutes? Can you please do that? I'm going to do is I'm going to pause. I'm going to walk around. I want to see how many individually, not as a team, but is, can you do this individually with your calculator? And if you didn't bring your calculator, maybe borrow a neighbor's calculator. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and open it up for numeric response. All right, so a lot of us were able to do this integral, so the length turns out to be 23.66 meters. So we'll put more digits uh, as we go to the next calculation because we need to put it in here. But just for three significant digits, it would be 23.7, and we'll give this one credit. I'm not certain about the other ones. All right, so now we have L. For length. Now we have to get R bar. Well, 
That's the distance from the axis of revol revolution. That's this axis, isn't it? To where the centroid is of that line. The centroid of that line, you don't think about the revolved line, just that line in the xy plane. That looks like it'll be, I don't know, somewhere around here. So we're needing this distance. That's our R bar. So is that, is that X bar that we need? Is that equal to R bar? Or is Y bar equal to R bar? You know, am I looking for X bar or Y bar? I know we can get a little discombobulated with the syntax and notation, but what am I looking, what do I need? It's the X bar, isn't it? Yeah, the Y bar is the height where the centroid is of the height, and the X bar is how far over. This is the X axis, is it not? Sorry about that, X axis. So if I'm gonna calculate, um, so R bar is equal to X bar, that's one over L times the integral of X D L. Did I do that right? Okay. I come down here and conveniently my integration to calculate length is already in terms of x. That makes life a lot easier. So it's going to be 1 over the 23.66, the integral of x times the square root of 1 plus x squared over 64. That's a square. Um, dx from 0 to 16. And when you do that, I'm sure your calculators can get generate that. Comes in at 9.1781 for R bar. And then we calculate the area. It's a 2 pi revolution in radians, it needs to be 9.1781 meter. And the length is the 23.66 meter. And so the area comes in at 1364 meter squared, you could round off to 1360. There you go. Look good? Hopefully you can do every step of that calculation. The last one, uh, we rev revolved the line and that generated an area. If you revolve an area, that generates a volume. So determine the volume of the solid formed by revolving the shaded area 360 degrees, which you have to interpret as 2 pi. About the z-axis right here is that z-axis straight down. So we look at it, and this is the shaded area now. How many segments would you like to bust this into? Two. Two. I mean, one person could bust it into three. You could put it into this one, and then that one, and then that one. Yeah, you can do more, but the minimum would be two that I see. This one and that one. Okay. So we'll just start our table to do the composite. So we'll have how many are there? One and two areas that are going to be revolved. And so what is the area? Our units look to be centimeters squared. So for, uh, that's a bad looking centimeter squared. Centimeter squared. Still doesn't look very good. But what is, let's call this one one and this one two. So what is the area of one? What's the area of one? Eight centimeters times 30 centimeters. Eight times three. Uh, did I mess it up? Yeah, 38, sorry. 38 times 38 comes in at 304. And then we're going to want to know what is our uh, distance to the centroid, what is R bar for that? So what is the distance out to the centroid with respect to the Z axis that we're revolving the area about? What is that? 12, 12 centimeters. 
All right, the next one, area two, is 25 plus 8 times 8. And that comes in at, for volume of 2, it comes in at uh, 264. Then what's the R bar for that one? 8 plus 8 plus 4 to 20 centimeters. And so we know the area, we know the R bar, so we calculate 2 pi R bar area for each of those. For the first one, it comes in at 22,921. Units are centimeter cubed. And uh, I just saw inconsistent the way I wrote those. Centimeter squared and centimeter cubed. Let's do this one. Centimeter cubed there. And then for the second volume, 33175, if you add those up, what do you get? 56096 centimeter cubed. So that's our volume total. All right, the last uh, clicker question. I want this in meter cubed. I want this volume in meter cubed. Give it to me in three significant figures, the answer in cubic meter, not centimeter cubed. All right, so what is the unit conversion that you must remember? How many centimeters are in one meter? 100. But uh, a lot of people will forget that you have centimeter cubed, not centimeter by itself. So when you move it over, you move it over six places, one, two, three, four, five, six. And so this comes in at uh, 0, 0.056, and we round off to one for, so let's see how we did. That's pretty good, right? All right. So this is the section of chapter five, 9 I was, I was wanting to cover, and so we finished it. 